Perth Linux Users Group, talking Linux and open source. My talk today is going to be um, about custom ROMs and my experience running and using them on my Android devices. Um, so a little bit about why I decided to run custom ROMs on my phone. Um, so I originally decided to run custom ROMs on my aging Moto G because at the time it wasn't receiving the latest software update. Um, new Android was out and I was like, oh, I want the new Android, but um, it's not officially available for my device. Um, I also had a bunch of like optimization problems like freezing, crashing, and the stock ROM was like in general not very stable. Um, and I switched to Linux OS 14.1, which was my first ROM. Um, pretty, and that ran a whole lot better, particularly on a device with only one gig of RAM. Um, and then I was running custom ROMs up until Oreo um, pretty successfully. Um, and then I did the stupid thing of trying to manually resize my partitions with Parted and managed to brick that phone, which wasn't great, but you'll learn, I guess. Um, and then the next phone that I had to run ROMs on was my Redmi Note 5, um, which I ran like a few ROMs, Evolution X and um, CR Droid. And then I have my current phone here, and uh, which I'm currently daily driving Evolution X. Um, again, based on Android 13, and I went from 12 to 13 on that. So, what are custom ROMs? Um, in general, custom ROMs are community-maintained Android versions um, built by the community, um, uh, like open source version of Android, um, and can be installed on various Android phones depending on maintainer and if um, someone in the Android community have built a custom ROM for your phone. Um, so here's a few custom ROMs you may or may not have heard of. Um, the most popular ones are probably Pixel Experience on Lineage OS, um, which give you mainly uh, basic, basic phone experience um, with stock Android. Um, and then you've got AICP Bootleggers and Resurrection Remix, which have quite a lot of more, quite a lot more customization features and features for people like me and other people who like tweaking. Um, their devices, stuff like that. And then the community has have also managed to port uh, Ubuntu Touch, Sailfish OS, and Kelly NetHunter, but I don't have that much experience using those personally. But as I understand for the Sailfish builds, um, the Android app support is kind of kind of broken, but I haven't really run it for long enough to to test really. But yeah, as I understand, it's pretty, pretty good and pretty impressive that they've been able to port non-Android um, non-Android ROMs to Android devices. Um, so why would you want to run a custom ROM? Um, the main reason why I think it's still relevant to run a custom ROM, even though Android has and have improved significantly um, over the years, is software updates. Most manufacturers don't provide software updates in a timely fashion, usually. It's like two to three years, and then your device gets abandoned which is not ideal if you're either a student or with limited, or someone with limited income or someone who just doesn't want to buy a phone every three years when the new one comes out and your manufacturer has decided not to give you the latest security update and Android version update to like get you to buy a new phone. Um, um, the other reason why people run custom ROMs is to de-Google devices, which allow you to completely remove Google Apps and Google Play services, and switch to something like um, Nano G apps and Micro and F Droid for applications, which re-implement re-implements uh, most of Google provides a like drop-in replacement for Google Play services um, with varying degrees of compatibility, as lots of apps rely on GMS and Google frameworks for Android. Um, Customization, which I've already mentioned a bit, but if you really like customizing your phone and for some reason want to like run crazy skins and change things, um, that's pretty good. Um, and the last one is just to use open source software and have the uh, peace of mind that you know how your phone works, um, how your phone works, you can fix it, you are part of a community who's developing Android, Android ROMs. Um, and in general, the time frame of getting 
updates is a whole lot more faster um, depending on what your manufacturer is. Um, Pixel devices and OnePlus devices are pretty good with software updates, but other phones like Samsung, Xiaomi, and a whole lot of <coughs> other brands may or may not give you um, the software support you'd probably want. Um, as like, to reiterate this, if you see this, this is basically the stats from Lineage OS's um, builds, which is, took them because they're mostly the one of the most popular custom ROMs and has probably the biggest biggest community. Uh, uh, yeah. I was going to do that at the end, but... Um. Uh, it, it wasn't in that list there, but uh, it, it's funny how Google phones are some of the easiest to... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, I didn't mention it, but there's, uh, what's it called? There's a ROM, I can't remember the name of, name's escaping me, which provides um, like more secure. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so if you see, if you, as I was saying before, if you see quite a lot of the phones are up to five years old, um, like Galaxy S7, I didn't realize that S7 was that old, but it's like came out in 2015. Um, and then you've got discounting the Raspberry Pi and the x86 builds. You've got like Xiaomi phones and Samsung phones are up to five to six years. And then OnePlus One, which is like really old at this point, came out in like 2013 and it's still getting support. I'm not too sure if this is the current Lineage OS build or just Lineage OS builds in general. Um, I didn't look too much into that. Um, and then whatever cool things you can do with a custom ROM, there's quite a lot, as I've already mentioned, UI customizations. Um, recent fonts, like anything that you'd want to change, you probably can, just because the people maintaining the ROMs um, have added in all those extra features. Um, proper backups, uh, that's one thing that's still lagging behind. Google are getting pr a bit better at providing users tools to properly back up their phone, but with a custom ROM and custom recovery, you can back up like everything, calls, texts, um, app data, because you have root access to your phone, you can back up all the partitions which you're not, you don't normally have access to, which is very convenient if you like. Um, yeah? 2FA tokens. Um, 2FA tokens can be restored and backed up completely within custom ROMs and recoveries. I have switched, I have been able to switch ROMs and keep all my 2FA tokens intact, which has been Interesting. Um, I think Orphy did it. Microsoft Authenticator didn't restore properly. It restored correctly. Like, it restored on my new ROM, but it registered as a new device, so I had to go in and manually change it. Um, but all the app data copied across quite well. Um, another, another reason would be to change boot animations, more of a customization. Um, people make custom boot animations, and they're kind of, kind of cool to try out. Um, Use proper Unix tools. There's Magis modules which give you, um, let you use BusyBox um, on Android phones, and quite a lot of like um, root apps and mods use BusyBox to um, change various aspects of aspects of your device. Um, remove bloatware, which is kind of like um, sometimes happens depending on which custom ROM you run. Like normally, when you run a ROM, it will debloat your phone. Like you'll switch from like a vendor ROM like Samsung or Xiaomi ROM to something that has minimal minimal Google Apps or no Google Apps at all. Um, another thing I already mentioned, but mention again, is use stock Android on devices that don't normally ship with stock Android. So your Samsung Galaxy, LG, Xiaomi, um, like the list goes on. Developers have even ported Android to Elite Pad because of course they have. Um, block ads. Um, you can like block, block, block ads with Addaway and Energize Protection, which um, blocks ads on your phone, which is kind of good. Um, I've also been able to use use those methods. There's other, there's like, there's another app um, which is normally used for hack to hack games, but you can take out all the ads, all the ads out of free games within app purchases, and then it just tries to load an ad. Sometimes it fails, and sometimes it like just lets you pass. Um, use custom kernels, which let you underclock and overclock your phone, depending on how much performance or battery life you'd, you'd want out of that. Um, System-wide theming with Substratum theming engine, 
which um, provides like theming for various parts of your interface, um, and I've dealt like a ton more, uh, which some of which I'll go on go over uh, in this talk, and some I may not. Um, so systemless root magisk. Um, magisk is how like most of the um, Magisk like is systemless root, which provides um, root access and um, also has a bunch of other bunch of other features like Magisk modules. Um, you used to you used to have before Magisk changed your development a bit. Uh, you used to be able to pass safety net, pass safety net, download Magisk modules within Magisk. Um, since the developer got hired by Google, um, he's had to change the way the project works. Uh, but other People in the open source community have picked it up with Fox's Magis module manager, which lets you um, download download Magis modules and install them like um, previously. And Universal Safety Net fix, um, which lets you um, pass Safety Net on devices with custom ROMs. Um, it's still a cat and mouse game between Google and the Android community, but usually the Android community are able to keep up. But there's always the chance that Google might block us, but it's worked for me and worked for lots of other people using ROMs, so yeah. Um, and then Zidjisk is the new version of Magis Hide um, built into Magis Manager, which lets you hide, hide root from apps like Pokemon Go, uh, Google Play Services, Play Store, and any other app which normally detects root, like banking apps. Um, Magis modules, as I've mentioned before, these are some of the like most popular ones, but there's a heap of them particularly um, for development, development tools. Um, I've seen, I think I've seen, seen one developer which um, he built all his custom ROMs on his phone and compiled them. Not sure why, but yeah, you can because you've got access to all, bi through BusyBox, you have access to all the um, native Linux tools for building ROMs. Um, Aircore, some of the like, ones I've got here, uh, would be AR Core Playground Patcher, which again works around one of the limitations of Google's limitations, uh, which is AR Core, which is only available for like six, six or seven or small, a small group of phones, but can be installed um, with this Magic module. You can just install it on your phone and have AR Core features for like Pokemon Go is a big Pokemon Go and the um, Niantic games are one of the one of the big reasons to do this, but there's also like fun experiments and apps on the Play Store which use AR, which are kind of fun to mess around with. Um, but the main ones are Pokemon Go. I've, I've found App Systemizer, which um, converts any non app installed by user by the user on your device to a system app and can be implemented uh, integrated into the system partition. Um, oh. Audio modica modification library, which and Viper for Android, which is a like I'll get I'll get to that later, but um, that lets you improve improve audio quality and use audio mods, um, which boosts boosts output and does a whole lot of other things in terms of um, audio and like music. Uh, BusyBox, which I've also mentioned already mentioned, um, one controller, which is quite useful if you play games on your phone, as it gives you all, um, it systemlessly, systemlessly, systemlessly adds in um, controller maps for PS4, Xbox One. System systemlessly, because Magisk, the way Magisk works, um, systemlessly, it, as in without modifying system files. Um, but yeah. <laughs> and then you've got advanced charging controller, which is um, a Magis module which helps um, helps like preserve preserve the life of your battery, and you can set thresholds of when you want your phone to stop charging, like at ninety percent, eighty percent, to like prevent from over discharge. Um, so switching ROMs. So how do you actually switch a ROM from a new build, like if you want to go to a different custom ROM? or if you want to upgrade to a newer Android version. Um, so if you get the Linux OS 20 update and you're running 19, how do you switch ROMs? So, so the, most, 
for server pr procedure is mostly just you download Migrate from a Play Store and you download Migrate Flasher. These are two apps which automate the backup process. So you take a backup with Migrate, um, and then you once that's completed, you move the backup off your device to like a USB or your computer, and then you flash your new ROM, um, flash your new ROM, and then sign in Google Play or download the APKs for um, for Migrate, um, and then from there you just restore restore all your restore your apps. And from my ex my experience, it's mostly seamless. Like I was on holiday and able to restore the Uber app and have my bank have my cards already there, so I could didn't have to like go in and re-add them. And social media normally works okay, but there's a few apps like Spotify has never played well with Migrate, and a few other apps don't work. But in general, it's pretty seamless, and there's like normally one or two apps I have to reinstall from Play Store. But in general, it's mostly mostly fine, and a lot better than previous previous methods like Titanium Backup, which used to be a thing. Um, basically, that app didn't properly update the newer Android versions, um, and there was a bunch of issues on using it with newer newer builds. Um, passing Safety Net, which is is as I've mentioned before, a cat and mouse game between us and Google. Um, so we I've already kind of touched on this, but um, from within Magis Manager, you hide Google Play services and GMS, um, and then you install Universal Safety Netfix or the modded version of Universal Safety Netfix to pass to pass Safety Net. Um, then you reboot your your device, check it with a Safety Net checker like YAS NAC, uh, which stands for Yet Another Safety Net Attestration che Checker, because <laughs> of course. Um, then you clear data. The, the main reason that this, this example is going through um, Google Wallet, which is probably the main thing that always breaks on me and the main thing I want to always have working on my phone um, for contactless payments. Um, and that's kind of a big thing. Um, but usually it works, but then it'll break, and then you'll check the GitHub or your Telegram for your ROM about the workaround, and then you spend like, half an hour to like a while trying to fix it. It's probably um, safety net and custom ROMs is probably one of the reasons that most people will say it's not worth it because of how much work you have to put into passing safety net and keeping it working. But in general, I've found I can like not update for a few months and, and be just fine. And then you, I have to like update Magisk when a new version comes out, which breaks Google Play, um, Google Pay. Um, yeah, there's been some times where I've been like trying to buy something and then my phone stops working and I have to fix it, but like it's okay. I say it's okay, but it's probably not ideal. <laughs> um, as I mentioned before, ad blocking, um, there's an app called Adaway, which you can install from F-Droid, not in the Google Play Store because it breaks their terms of service and Google doesn't want you to block their ads. So yeah, you can use it without root, but with root it's better. Um, because um, basically all it is is a custom host file. So, um, and then you can add your own host files within Adaway. Um, and sometimes it blocks ads completely, and sometimes it um, just like stops the JavaScript or the web page from loading, um, which also blocks ads. Yeah. Um, so, install from FDroid, add the systemless host um, Magis module. Um, and then update Adaway and get it to download and apply sources and reboot your device. Pretty straightforward. Um, YouTube, YouTube Revance, which some history on YouTube Vance. YouTube Vance used to be a thing. I'm sure some people remember YouTube Vance, but they, they decided to try and buy crypto. They decided they were going to use YouTube Vance to try and buy crypto. And of course, that was infringing Google's copyright, so Google shut them down. But it's all good because we now have YouTube Revanced, um, which in some ways is a better, better version of YouTube Advanced. Um, you download the APK from the YouTube Advanced website, um, and then it lets you choose what features you want to add. So 
some things you can add is like um, the, what's it called? Um, like adding, the, adding back in the dislike button, um, disabling shorts, background playback, and ad blocking. Basically, YouTube Vance is most of the features in YouTube Red that you normally have to pay for, aside from like the movies and stuff, um, and lets you do everything that you can, like background playback and all that, which you'd normally have to have YouTube Red for. Um, can work non-rooted, but I think it's better on a rooted device. Um, Viper for Android, which I've already mentioned. Um, yeah, yeah install, the AP, install the Magis module for audio modification, install the uh, Magis module for Viper for Android, um, update the APK, reboot your device, and you have audio, audio enhancements for Bluetooth, Bluetooth speaker and Bluetooth speaker and headphones. Um, and you can like increase for volume output and customize um, like reverberation and all that. I'm, sh I'm not someone who uses music knows how it works really. I just like turn on everything and okay. But I'm sure people who like are really audiophiles or into music get more out of it than I do. Um, but I found like the output the output gain is significantly significantly better than using um, like your phone stock um, volume output and the like the only disadvantage is you'll like turn your phone up and it'll be really loud, <laughs> which isn't great. Um, but I found it particularly useful when you combine it with a Magis module for one of my phones, which turns the headphone jack into a second speaker. Um, so you've got like sort of a dual speaker setup, but it's not officially supported because it's probably not a great idea to use your earpiece as a speaker. Um, Substratum Theme Engine, which I've already talked about a bit, provides system-wide theming, theme stock apps, and system UI, is officially supported on unrooted phones on Android 10 um, because Google added the required things for that to work. Um, but some vendor ROMs may, may or may not work. The cool thing about this is it will also work on non-stock non -stock Android. So it will work on TouchWiz and manufacturer ROMs, providing you have Magisk, Magisk and root access installed. Officially supports Android 7 to 12, but there's like a work in progress version, which I tried out like before this talk um, on my phone, um, but I haven't, haven't got it working exactly, but I've used it in the past successfully. Um, so if you're running up, having an older, have an older phone, it might be worth trying out. If you see the screenshots, screenshots there, that kind of shows you what types of things can be, can be changed. But there's a bunch of like, there's a bunch of paid, paid themes on the Play Store and free themes. So if you want to try it out, that's something you can do with a rooted phone and using a custom ROM. Um, custom kernels, um, there's a bunch, they're probably the most important ones um, and popular ones. Uh, particularly for older devices, there'll normally be a custom kernel which improves performance significantly for battery life particularly. I haven't found too much of a reason to switch custom kernels recently, and I don't think I've done it on my current phone for a while. I'm probably running um, some sort of custom kernel that my ROM developer has shipped. Um, and to actually control, co control, control like um, how, how fast your CPU is working and how fast your phone's working, um, you'll need a kernel control app like Franco, Franco Kernel or Kernel Auditor, or there's one for Elemation, uh, Elemental X. They have one as well, and you install that and you um, change things, and it lets you install, like customize your um, thermals. So according to, according to Franco, Francisco Franco, the developer of Franco Kernel, 25% uh, um, dec decrease in the CPU frequency, like gives a good balance of performance and battery life. Um, you can get pretty aggressive depending on how much you want to save. I used to spend quite a bit of time min-maxing my phone and then I was like, this doesn't really matter that much anymore. <laughs> um, another cool thing you can do if your kernel supports it is backlight dimming. So you can reduce the, reduce the max brightness of your phone, which depending on how much you want to sacrifice that, can have pretty, pretty, pretty big gains in, per, 
in terms of screen on time because like your phone versus screen and the brightness is the main thing that drains your battery. Um, and the other thing, particularly for low-end devices, when I was running my Moto G, it was really useful to have ZRAM, um, which isn't as good as real RAM, but on a device with only one gig of RAM, it's better than nothing. <laughs> I think I have ZRAM on my current phone enabled a bit, but it's not like I have, I don't know, six gigs of RAM, so it doesn't make too much difference. But on lower-end devices and mid-range phones, it's really, I found it more useful to run a custom kernel. Um, so that's most of the stuff I'm going to cover. Um, so I'm going to go for, go for a demo, which will be installing custom ROM on my Redmi Note 5, which may or may not work the best from here, but we'll see. We'll see how we go. Um, let me just go to the right workspace. So let's go to the correct directory to explain some things. Can I make the test bit go? Um, not really, <laughs> unfortunately. Oh, OK. Yeah. OK. <laughs> yeah, this isn't great. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so um, what do we have here? So normally, uh, let me just see if we're connected to ADB. No, uh, fast boot devices. Um, anyway, um, normally I can't really. I will get to here in a few minutes. For Alt F. Okay, so. So, here we go. So, here's the XDA guide on unlocking the bootloader on the Redmi Note 5. Um, I'm going to go through some of these steps in the XDA thread because I've already done quite a lot of them when I initially got this phone. Um, unlocking the bootloader on most phones will, provide, will either um, require similar steps or more involved steps depending on device and depending on um, if your phone's supported. Quite a lot of manufacturers don't let you unlock the bootloader. Um, Xiaomi, OnePlus, Google, Samsung uses a different architecture, so technically you can unlock bootloader on international models. Um, yeah, but a lot of phones will not be supported with custom ROMs because, of course, manufacturers don't like you knowing how your phone works. Um, so, can I make the text bigger? I can. Control plus, come on. <coughs> okay, okay, is that better? Okay, is that better? Okay. If you're a bit low, get something similar. Okay, I'm just gonna do, 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 do fast boot OEM device info. So, I've already done this on my phone, but basically the procedure is pretty straightforward. Check if your bootloader is locked. If your bootloader is locked, which it probably will be on a new phone, um, you'll have to request permission from, not Xiaomi particularly, but your manufacturer to unlock it. Um, for Xiaomi, you have to wait like 160 days, um, which isn't great and really annoying, but that's what you have to do. There's ways to try and bypass it, um, and once you've done it for one phone, you can kind of reuse permission, um, but in usually it's 160 days you'll have to wait on the Xiaomi side. Other manufacturers like OnePlus and Google is basically straightforward. Um, there's a bunch of steps to do it for Xiaomi, which is unique to Xiaomi devices and what you won't have to do for other phones. Um, so for Xiaomi, you'll have to register online, then download the win their Windows app. Um, there is a Linux version, which also works. Um, and go through the unlock process, and that app will do the bootloader unlocking. And then you can install TWRP Recovery, um, which lets you flash ROMs. I'm going to try and show this as best I can um, on my phone. I don't know how well this will work exactly, but we will, we will see. Uh, so I'm not sure how I'm going to do the phone side of things. Um, We've got a camera? Okay. So I'll see if I can do this. Um,
How's this go? I can't see what my phone's doing. <laughs> it's only pro- Yeah, I can do that. Okay, this is going to be really, really, really interesting. Um. Oh, okay, that'll work. This is going to be going to be fun. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Um. So. <laughs> yeah, this is probably going to be the best we get. Hang on, this might work. If we do that. Okay. Okay. Um. This is going to be interesting. I'm probably going to have to like do something, then show, then do something, then show. Uh, that will be work. So coming from a cu- coming from a stock ROM, you will have to wipe. You will have to wipe all partitions, everything, um, and sometimes format data to remove encryption. Um, we're going to do that for this because I've tested this and I spent a while getting this working. <laughs> um, so we're going to wipe all partitions on our phone. Uh, Going from wiping. Yep. So during preparing for this talk, I discovered that Android 13 ROMs on this phone require the data partition to be formatted to F2SFS. I have originally tried booting with ext4 and discovered the keyboard wasn't working. So that was interesting. So to fix that, we go to. Yep. Where are we going? Sorry. Oh, yeah, that's going to work. That's going to work well. Um, can we actually see my phone? If we can zoom in. Um, how do I do this? It's okay. I can, yeah, as long as other people can see it and I can operate it, that's... Should be good. Okay, so we go to manage partitions. We say data. I've already done this, but um, some ROMs, when you're coming from a particular Android version, you'll have to normally get a new recovery because <laughs> recoveries have to be updated. See how this is already F2FS, so we don't have to do anything. And usually ROM developers will say, this build needs this, this build needs that. You need this particular firmware, and then you just install that particular firmware, and then it works. Um, so we are going to go back to menu. Uh, we go to here. We go to SD card, uh, download. And because we've wiped that, we're going to install custom ROM, add to queue. And then we're going to choose Magisk and swipe to confirm flash. Uh, the ROM I'm installing is called Dirtfest um, <laughs> because, of course, it's called Dirtfest. There's so many more crazy ROMs names. Um, so we wait for this to finish flashing, um, which takes a while. Um, this ROM includes G apps, um, so quite a lot of ROMs nowadays will include Google apps as part of a ROM package, but there are a few that don't. In which case, you'll need to go and get a um, Open G apps or Micro G apps and flash that separately. Lineage OS doesn't, um, but quite a lot of more feature-rich ROMs. For some reason, developers have decided to include Google Apps, probably because 90% of people need that to, for their phone to work. Um, we wait for this to finish flashing, which takes a while, but not too long. I'll probably go f- also go through sa- fixing safety net as well, um, which I wanted to check was working before, before I came here. So now it's going to do Magisk. Patching RAM disk, repatching boot, Im- boot image, and we're almost done. So is that actually focusing properly? Yep. OK. Flashing new boot image, system as root. OK. So that means wipe caches. Reboot system.
Oh, yeah, you cut off the top of the phone a bit. It shouldn't matter too much, though. If you get to watch the... Cool boot animation. <laughs> um, I literally, like, this week just looked what's a new ROM for this phone and downloaded it and installed it. Um, I've never used this ROM before. Um, so that'll be fun. Resurrection Remix. Um, Resurrection. Yeah. Resurrection Remix has not updated to newer Android version. Uh, what do we want to do? Just center it. Center it? Like that? Is that better? Seriously hoping I won't. It's going to be so bad if I just boot looped on the in the demo. <laughs> but um, once you flash your ROM, it does take a while to boot because it's like redoing your redoing because you're basic you've basically redone your whole operating system. Um, there we go. Well, while I'm doing it, like I want to do this. There we go. Welcome to your Android. Um, so this is going to want me to sign into Google Play, and I'm not going to want to do that on camera. Skip mobile data. So I'm going to skip like most of the set setup. Oh, uh, actually, I do need to connect to Wi-Fi. I wonder if this will let me do it in the setup though. Should. It should do. Yep. There we go. Getting your phone ready. If we got this far, um, it's good. It means we've got Google Apps normally working for really alpha custom ROMs, which I have lots of <laughs> experience on my older phones. Um, sometimes the setup just won't work, uh, but. And you'll have to like skip it or use a particular version of gapps. Um, one of the big improvements to Android recently has been Project Rebel and all the tools that Google have given for developers, like manufacturers, to build Android easily, which the manufacturers don't want to because they don't want you <laughs> want to give people updates. But couldn't connect. Try using another network. Um, I'm going to need this to update Magisk. Uh, Okay. I don't know. It's not. It's not. It's in the setup, like the first phone setup, so it won't be able to do that. Uh, I can try plug members. Plug is good. Okay. It might get through, and it might not. So I'm going to go through probably the most. I think the most complicated thing, which is passing safety net on a new phone. Um, Then I might go through some of the like customization features in this, this ROMs menu as well. Um, so after this, I have a little bit more, but not. Oh, there we go. I'm not going to copy any apps and data because I don't have another. I'm not taking from a new phone. Um, so I'm. I do, but I'm not going to sign into a Google account here because <laughs> I don't want people to see my password. Not that it really matters because it's. In my password manager, so okay, we're getting there. Okay, sign in. No, no, <laughs> we're not really doing. I really want you to do all this stuff. I don't want to do that. But of course, if you've used, you know, if you're not using Google Apps, you can like skip all this, and it's a whole lot easier. I'm gonna set a screen lock because okay. Yeah. <laughs> Fingerprint sensor on this phone we should normally work. Let's see if it's going to work, which means I may or may I, I fixed this. I fixed um, this phone recently, so I may or may not. Oh yeah, that's okay. Um, your phone ready? Oh, there we go. Okay, so here we go. We have gestures for now. So uh, first thing we do is we want to go to Magisk. Why did Magisk not get installed? We might need to fix that. Um, that's okay. Um, we go to files. Go to downloads. Let's just install this settings. Hang on. 
Hang on, I might need to reboot and refresh my disk. But match just was installed. Open. Let's see if it's showing as installed. Allow. Okay. Requires additional setup. Uh, might have not. It might have not installed my disk for some reason. Repacking boot image. New boot image. Let's see if this is. It's asking me to reboot, but I'll just see if I we actually have to. <laughs> it really wants me to reboot. Uh, before I start getting very frustrated at this, I'm going to change it so it doesn't use this horrible gestures because it makes it really tricky to demonstrate stuff. Um, so we're going to change it to free button navigation. Oh, that's much better. It's much, much better. Go back. Go back. Okay. Okay, 25.2, okay. So we've got an older version, but we've already done that. So I'm going to reboot and say reboot. <coughs> like every time you change things with your ROM or like add a new app or do something like substratum or add away, <laughs> you'll normally have to reboot your phone. Um, which, like, if you don't spend 100 hours messing with your phone, you don't have to restart your phone, of course. Uh, we'll let this finish. Then I'm just going to go through, like, safety net and then probably a bit more, like, some of the features in this particular ROM. I haven't really explored it, so I'll do what I normally do. So we'll go to my disk, and now we should see the latest version should be installed. This is doing. Nice and sure. Okay, so 26 installed, installed. RAM just, yes, it's just no. Okay, cool. So, first thing, one of the things we want to do is go to files, allow, downloads, and we want to install yet another safety net administration checker. And we go update, okay. It's only way So, Right now, I'm checking if SafetyNet is passing on our phone, which lets us um, use Google Play Store and uh, Pokemon Go and other, other apps which um, normally detect that our device is rooted. So if I go run SafetyNet Administration Checker, it should give us two red crosses, but it needs to have internet to do it. So let's just... Yeah. Red new note for wired. I don't. It says I'm connected to plug. It might just be slow. It's got like no location stuff. On. Is it trying to update everything? I don't think so because I haven't signed in. Let's try this again. Um. Don't close that. Yep, fail and fail. Too bad. What are we going to do? We're going to go into here. Where first thing we want to do, uh, okay. Um, if I no, I don't want to reboot right now, but I am going to soon. It really wants us to. Okay, so go to settings. Go to settings. Go to settings. Okay. Um, Pizza modules. Okay. I'm going to still from storage. Okay. So I tried a few so what we want is this one, the universal safety net fix. Um that's a one one of the steps we need to do to pass safety net. Uh we want to reboot, but we're not gonna reboot now. I'm gonna actually um uh, it's a fix which um it's a hack to work around key attestration um, by the community to prevent Google from knowing your device is rooted. But that's only one of the checks it needs to pass. Um, 
So the base, there's one check for like the device fingerprint. Um, so if it detects like things are different, it will trip for that. I don't exactly know how it works too much, but there's like lots of other people in the Android community have, and like security researchers probably know probably know more than I do. So if we go to Magisk again, when it's going to ask us to reboot, we're actually going to do it this time. We're going to say okay, rebooting in five seconds. The annoying thing about this is you have to follow the steps in the exact order, and a lot of the custom ROM installation stuff is you have to follow all the steps in the exact order, and you deviate from the order just slightly, you'll spend like hours <laughs> trying to work out what you've gone wrong on a phone that's not working. Uh, wait for our ROM to boot. Okay, do it first. Passcode in. Um, so now uh, let's just see if Magisk has got Zygis. Um Otherwise, we'll have to. Yep. Okay. Why can't I go to settings? Should go to settings. <sighs> Module <laughs> superseded because the this is not enabled. Okay. I tested this <laughs> last night. Um, okay. Um, I'm going to do a few reboots. Oh, this is not fun. Okay. Magisk 26.1. I might just refresh Magisk. Can I actually just click in this part of it? Yeah. So I'm just going to. Okay. So, just enabling the option to reboot to um, custom recovery easily. Uh, you oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I'm not sure why. Go to my disk again. Why is my screen protector? My screen protect just preventing me from pressing on elements. This is not. I I I <laughs> I tell you this was working when I tested it last night. Um, if we go back, we go back, we go back. Um, no 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 no. I think the screen protect. If I take this off, I don't really wanna. Um, No, no, no. I'm gonna just. Okay. Didn't really want to do this, but I think this is gonna be why it's not working. Okay. Yeah, my screen protector was getting in the way. Okay. Is that better? Can we see? To the right. Right. Yeah. Is that better? Okay. So now we've got that sorted. Um, we're going to enable Zygisk, um, configure deny list, actually enforce deny list, configure deny list, uh, show system apps, and then we're going to find, we're going to find Google Play services, and click on this. We hide all of that, and then we have <laughs> to find Google GMS, 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 uh, our Play Store. Play Store is the other thing. Photos, somewhere around here should be the Play Store. I just, Google Play Store, there we go. So hide all that. Hide all that, everything is going to be hidden. So, um, hide manage yourself, enforce deny list. Okay, so we've done that. So now this module says Zygisk is not enabled. And if we go here, we can see Zygisk says no. So we've just enabled Zygisk, so we're going to restart our phone again. And then this should be the last restart, and then we should be fa passing safety net. Oh, 
didn't really want to break my screen protector, but no. Oh well. Yep, and we should be back in dirt first. Um, and then we go to here. Now we run the administration checker. Um, this base, pass and pass. That is good. It means we can now, um, if I wanted to add my Google account, I can go and download Google Pay. And if my phone has NFC, which this one doesn't, unfortunately, um, use contactless payments. Um, then, as I said before, we have a gazillion customizations we can do. I haven't actually explored this yet, but show percentage, um, show percent inside, so that shows percent inside the battery icon, show percent, our oh, people can't see the top, and that's what I want people to see, hang on. You can oh, you can? Can you see the status bar? Like where the time and stuff is? Can you see the status bar where the time is? You can see it? Okay, cool. Okay, show percent, so we cannot show percent, uh, show percent inside. Um, Screen on that camera is a bit quick. Yeah, battery style, circle, which is what I u normally use. Text, like everything that you could ever want to customize is mostly here. Uh, clock position, which some people say they really want to be able to change, but I don't see as much of a difference. Um, AM, PM style. Uh, Background chip, what's this? Oh, that's cool. Solid color gradient, uh, accent, auto hide, double light, show clock set seconds. Uh, what else are we gonna do? Miscellaneous. Logo, because there's no, there's no reason why you wanna do this, it's just, just because. And you can choose from all these different logos. And we're gonna choose Windows or Linux Mint, or Ubuntu, or Tux, um, and what's something we want to change? Quick settings. Yeah, like, there's a bunch more settings in custom ROMs that I could go all over, um, but the main one, if it's enabled on this, oh, I'll have to go and enable it. Um, lock screen UI, lock screen short, ambient display, uh, fingerprint off. Charging animation. One of the cool things is, I don't know if it's on this ROM, but you can slide your finger along the status bar and that changes your brightness, which is kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to now switch over to my daily driver <sighs> and see how my phone's set up. So, yeah, so it's basically stock Android on. Yep. Um, so it's basically stock Android for the most part. And if I go into some of the things I was talking about before, like Viper 4 Android effects, um, and you can change all these, all these settings depending on how you, how you want audio to behave. Um, master limiter. Um, I tested this with Spotify a while back and found it's a bit better. But like all these, all these tweaks, like most people will say, it's not really worth doing. But if you, you're interested in using open source software and custom ROMs on your phone, I think it's worth it, but yeah. Um, only, only other thing that I want to talk about, which, can I get my screen back? My screen came back. Let's just go to right works. Uh, I'm done with the demo, yeah. Um, yep, so we can turn the camera around. Let's just... Only last thing was going to be F5, F5, F5. Hang on. Uh, no, 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 go through all that, through all that, through all that. Switching ROMs. Um, so you want to try this yourself. How? What's the best way to actually get started with custom ROMs? Um, the best, like, the resources I use is probably forum.xdadevelopers.com, which is the, the where most of the Android community is. You basically XDA your device. And you usually find instructions. <laughs> the other one is Telegram, which lots of lots of ROM developers have been using to use moving using Telegram for their um, ROM releases. Like um, 
Wired up Updates Official um, is the one I got Dirt First from, and that wasn't on XTA. So a lot of instructions about that are in Telegram. So you kind of have to find the community for your phone, and then you get like constant updates on ROMs and developments and everything. Um, like I'm in a, a good thing about Telegram compared to XTA is you can get like instant support from your ROM developer. So if you have a problem or something, you can just ask in the Telegram channel and they'll usually be able to help you, or at least someone will. Um, like when SafetyNet stopped working for me, I saw in the Telegram channel the solution and found it. And actually, interestingly enough, reported on GitHub. So in the GitHub for KDragon's SafetyNet fix, I'm in there somewhere telling them that it worked <laughs> with, uh, with the modded version. But like, that's it for the most part, unless people have questions, which is kind of unique, so I'm sure lots of people do. Yep. Uh, is there a way to set up a tiling window manager on your phone? Like maybe like put a... a yeah, a sort of. Um, so or there's... Or? It's already a tiling window manager. Oh, really? <laughs> it's already a tiling window manager. You've got like this Android split thing. But yeah, you, um, I didn't mention it, but people have ported like Arch Linux and Ubuntu and stuff to quite a lot of Android tablets, kind older ones, but I think I felt saw some people that got were in process of getting uh, what's the post-market OS working on a Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. And I think Pixel C has a build of Arch Linux um, and a few other tablets, because they're a tablet, people have taken it into themselves to build like regular Linux for it, and quite some of them work really well, um, and some don't, but that's how you how, what happens with custom ROMs, really. Um, I kind of hoped someone would po port the um, Librem software um, to Android phones, because I think, like, it's great software, but you're limited by the hardware, which... Um, and, and a lot of the things with custom ROMs are you're limited by the hardware, you're limited by the by the restrictions that Google or your manufacturers have put on you and custom kernels and other ways work around this, um, yeah. So for your question, can you run Linux? Um, yes, you can. There's methods of running, messing of running Linux using root to like run it on your phone and have and be able to do more things. Um, but you can all, or there's also Linux loaders on the Play Store you can use without any modifications. And another cool thing is, um, um, Samsung DeX, which is a thing uh, for Samsung phones, that they had like an ARM version of Ubuntu which you could run in Sign DeX. But people in the community have ported like Arch Linux, Void, and other other environments to Samsung's framework, which is interesting. Was it? Do you had a question? Oh yeah. Okay. Given how sort of like, um Okay, a bit tedious, but it's yeah. straightforward if you know what you're doing. How yep. come there hasn't been a sort of semi-commercial service where you just uh, mail on your phone? Mail there your is. Phone. There's a commercial service, but it's not really a commercial service. Um, there's call E. I think EOS is one. Um, they sort of provide an open source Android version. It's a bit skinned. But the reason why there's not a commercial service is because like running Linux on a Windows laptop, there's not. And the, oh, there's also the fact that it's against Google's terms and service and voids your warranty, which I didn't mention, uh, which I probably should have, but I, I prefer not to talk about the downsides of custom ROMs. But uh, it does void your warranty. You could, can break your phone. You can brick your phone. I've bricked phones before. I haven't, I haven't recently. Um, there's a lot of misinformation about custom ROMs and what's routing and what's a custom ROM and what's, what's safe, what's not. Am I going to break my phone? Um, you, when you unlock your bootloader, you see these big warnings that say, do not proceed, you may damage your device. So obviously, <laughs> it's, it's there to make people less inclined and to cover manufacturers, um, like, so make sure they don't get sued or whatever. Um, but... When your phone's five years old and isn't getting security updates, you really don't have many more options aside from buying a new phone, which is kind of sad. Um, and manufacturers have done a like really shit job at providing timely software updates on the Android side. There's lots of reasons for it. Um, the 
the menu, like, it's not even any easier for the community to build custom ROMs. It's in some ways harder because they need to build a complete device tree and they need to update the device tree when a new ROM comes out and for the new platform version. And there's also cases when they're, they're using old drivers. So if a manufacturer only supported to Android 7, they're still using Android 7 drivers and they're trying to get them working on Android 12. So there's a lot of, lot of hurdles that, that. But Google have made it easier for manufacturers, which in turn makes it easier for the community to build custom ROMs. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, there's, I think there's a few services. There's like, um, there's EOS, but not, not really many where someone can just do it. Um, people have, someone's, a few people have paid me to do it for them, but I wouldn't really <laughs> say, say that's a good idea. Um, but like if you know someone who, you, if you have a friend who knows what they're doing, you can probably easily flash custom ROM. Um, get them to do it for you, but I think it's pretty straightforward. But like, not everyone does, and yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so these uh, these ROM images, they're basically um, ISO images, executable no. binaries. No. So what no. are they? No. Um, so it's ROM as in operating system. Um, so a custom ROM is it's a custom Android distribution. So think of it as li like Linux. There's a Linux distribution. Yeah, it's like a hard disk image. So, no. Yeah. So in that example, I didn't um, go through it too much, but I'm flashing a zip file. So ROMs are usually in a zip file format, and they are device specific. So you can't. Um, in certain cases, there are unified builds. So like for the OnePlus phones, OnePlus three and OnePlus three T, they use the same build, but they are device specific. You have to get the code name of your device correct. Um, if you don't get the code name of your device correct, there is a risk of you bricking your phone, but lots of ROMs nowadays have protections in place to stop you from bricking your phone. So the developer will go in when they do their install and say, detect the code name of your device, and if it finds this, it will not install. But like in the early days of custom ROMs, some people brick their phones by flashing a ROM builds or doing something like that. But yeah. Um, What's your question again? Sorry, so <laughs> I got it's excited. A binary image? No, it's uh, yeah, it's it's like a binary image. It's it's the most similar thing is probably installing to a Raspberry Pi, um, where you have to flash the image, but you're flashing it within a custom recovery, um, not within. There are ways to like. There's a thing called multi ROM, which I didn't touch on, which lets you run multiple ROMs on your phone, like dual booting. But that's pretty niche and. Um, it was popular a while ago. There's, I think there's the, I think for that phone I have over there, there's a build, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it because it's a massive hack to the way Android works. Your phone isn't designed, your phone is already not designed to boot a custom Android ROM. Um, make it even more unstable by getting it to boot two custom Android ROMs or three custom Android ROM, ROMs is even more. I haven't used it, so I can't, I can't say how stable it is, but. Um, yeah, um, it's just like a bot. You download it from, um, from like XDA or from like your maintainer or or a Lineage OS website. Um, but yeah, there's there's some people who are concerned about the security when you're trusting you're trusting a random person on the internet to provide your software updates. Um, but it's open source, so like it open source doesn't protect something from being dangerous or whatever. Um, but general, I would recommend to use use open source ROMs because because of Android's licensing, maintainers can close source ROMs, which isn't great. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I'd say it's a good idea to use custom ROMs, but that's just me. Now, the, the, the open source software, how how can that be human readable? Is there like a C source? Of yeah, there's a there's a there's a there's a GitHub for all a like, bunch of cust all these custom ROMs I talked about. If you look at their GitHub, there's a um, there's like Lineage OS have all their device trees published, um, but maintainers will have their own device tree that they build, um, but and lots of maintainers will cherry pick from other maintainers' <laughs> device trees, um, and all the like. For that phone, there's a device tree for the um, Redmi Note 5, which you can use to build other ROMs. 
Uh, but as I discovered when I attempted to build a custom ROM myself, um, you can't just take a device tree from one ROM and magically put it on another. And there's a quite a lot of porting. There's, a qu there's so much work developers go into to getting, for getting this stuff working. It's like, it's, it's amazing, <laughs> um, really. And they're just like people like me or students who have all their free time. And they have, they have all these resources, but for some reason the trillion dollar companies you buy your phone from can't update your ROM for you and, and provide you consistent software support. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So what about the phones? Because there's so many companies making yeah. Android-compatible phones. Yes. So what about the architecture? Are the architectures similar? Um, um, like, mostly it's going to be ARM64 or ARM32. Um, they are, most phones will use a Snapdragon processor or an Exynos for Samsung phones, Exynos. MediaTek is where you're not going to have as good support. So lots of the cheap Chinese phones, like that's a Xiaomi phone, it's a cheap phone. It has, um, it has a ROM, but Snapdragon is probably what you want to do, but you really want to do your research, right? Um, so if I go out and buy like a Nokia 7 Plus, that I think there was a, that, yeah, that's not necessarily, depending on what phone you buy, you're not necessarily going to be able to run a custom ROM on it. Um, so if you buy like, um, like an Oppo phone, that has a locked bootloader. Lots of phones have locked bootloaders. So you kind of have to do your research and know what phone you're buying in advance. Um, like I've been lucky, and like my first, first Android phone I bought was a Motorola phone, which had custom ROMs available for it. Um, but in general, like if you have a popular phone, so if you have like a Samsung Galaxy phone in Australia, not a US model, um, you're probably going to be pretty, pretty good. Or if you have like a... Um, Pixel or other other phone, but like depending on what phone you have, you may or may not be able to run a custom ROM because just it's not possible for the reasons of some of the reasons I mentioned because manufacturers have locked the bootloader and don't give you don't release source code for their devices. And even then, with lots of the Samsung phones, lots of the community have to reverse engineer it. Um, so they they'll normally go and dump they'll dump a like device tree using the manufacturer's kernel, and from there work out how to make it stable and bootable. But yeah, um, I think with Project Treble, not Project Treble, with Google's Next OS, they're trying to, they want to make f mobile um, phones more easy for them to support because Android is a massive mess for them to maintain um, just because every, every ROM or every manufacturer has to build their own um, device tree for their phone. Um, like the community have to, they have to like update it to a new OS version. It's, a, it's like quite a lot of work for, for Android and there's quite a lot of security problems. But on the flip side, it lets people who want to run a custom ROM and that's something you can't do on an iPhone and you can't do on a lot of, like because of the open source nature, it's a double-edged sword. It means manufacturers can like do dodgy things with the code because of how Android is licensed. <coughs> But because it's an open source project and AOSP exists, um, it means we can have aftermarket support and use custom ROMs on our phones. You mentioned something about Pokemon Go being able to detect... If Pokemon Go uses SafetyNet, um, which I already mentioned. And SafetyNet, as I've already demonstrated, can be passed with Magisk. Um, Pokemon Go will, like, after, like, if you're playing for a while, will be like, you've got a rooted device, you can't use this app. Um, and then you'll have to, like, hide it with... So with Pokemon Go, to fix that, you'll have to go into Zygisk, um, which, I, which I went through a bit, hide the app, um, hide the app, um, and then go back into it, and it should, it should work. Um, Do you know how it detects that your phone's been... Modified? Phone's been tampered with? Um, I think I mentioned, mentioned it a bit, but um, your phone will have something called a device fingerprint, which is um, like your manufacturer, your board, your like operating system version, the kernel you're using. Um, and if that's changed, even in the cases if you call, I found the AR Core Playground Patcher and other Magis modules which modify properties of your device tree, not device tree, of your device fingerprint, will trip safety net and my Google Pay will stop working. Um, so I'll have to like undo something I've done 
to make sure Google Pay works. But in general, it's pretty... Um, so safety net is how Google detects your phone is rooted. Um, and it's a way they um, make sure Android is secure. Um, you are bypassing security features in your phone to like work around all this. Um, so yeah, there's, a, there's quite a lot of apps which detect it. Um, a lot of games, um, Instagram, oh, in, no, Snapchat is one for some random reason. Snapchat detects it. Um, like a lot of things you wouldn't think would detect safety net do detect safety net. Um, and you can work around it. The, the developer of um, safety net, Top John Wu, um, who now works for Google, um, did a lot of research into Android and found, a lot, found out a lot about how the security works. Um, just by developing Magisk as his project. And um, yeah, he's really like, yeah, he, he, he's, found, he's found quite a lot of security vulnerabilities. And yeah, all this stuff is sort of how I got interested in Linux and Android and cybersecurity and all this other stuff. Anyway, I could talk for hours about custom ROMs, but if people have any more questions. Um, for the ROMs which you're using on your main phone, yes. how, how often do they put out security updates? Um, Mostly in line with Google and the Pixel. And does that sort of just security updates for the main Android system or what happens if there's kernel problems? Kernel problems. Kernel, what do you mean? Kernel, kernel security bugs. I think there, yeah, I think, I'm not, not too sure about the kernel side of things, but I know security patches are added and I think kernels update, like, Every few ROM releases, they do upgrade the kernel, so I'm presuming, the main, presuming my maintainers update that. Um, I looked into ba what you have to do to be a maintainer, and there's quite a lot of things you have to meet in, if you're wanting to maintain a ROM. You have to, like, sig you have, to like, have SE Linux enforcing. That's a big thing. Don't have permissions at SE Linux for security reasons, and you have to be able to like, regularly update your phone. Um, but I don't know how strict... If... I think... Um, to apply for maintainership, I don't know too much about it because I haven't looked into it that much. But I believe you have to like meet regularly patch and stuff um, phones. But there there are some. That I'm I'm sure there's a slight. You're making your security a bit less secure by using a custom ROM, but I'm not sure to the extent really because I haven't looked into it. And I guess one other follow up question: Have you tried relocking the bootloader after no, installing one of these so that I haven't. other people can't install random crap on your phone? Yeah, there are. I think with Postmarket, uh, with the Pixel, you can do that. Um, you can relock the bootloader, um, but lots of ROMs are encrypted nowadays, so you've got encryption. You have an unlocked bootloader. You have encryption, so that kind of, kind of, kind of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think on um, what's not Postmarket OS, the other one for Pixel, I can't remember what it's called, um, the really secure one, um, Graphene OS, you can lock, I think you can lock the bootloader. But they've made so many patches to Android and Postmarket OS to make it really secure that I'm sure a lot of people in the Android community aren't doing. Um, but yeah. Um, lots of, uh, the other thing that like um, people have noticed is um, if there's a bug in one ROM, there's a bug in all these ROMs because developers are just like being lazy and cherry picking. <laughs> because they'll just like get cherry pick and then you'll get a bug in all these ROMs um, because like people who are doing it don't really, they do know what they're doing. They, they, have, they know what they're doing to a certain extent as, at a hobbyist level, but I'm sure they don't have as much understanding as like, but considering custom ROM developers do a better job at supporting your phone than manufacturers, it's pretty impressive. The fact that a hobbyist can do a better job at supporting your phone than the company you paid money for is like pretty, 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 pretty amazing. But like a lot of people, like your regular person isn't going to go on custom and, and, and buy a particular phone just so they can run a custom ROM. Um, but if you happen to have like, if you happen to be in a position where you can, I think it's worth doing, um, particularly if you don't want to buy a new phone every few years. Any more questions? <laughs> Could you repurpose an old phone for just one job? Let's say a yes. time-lapse camera. Yes. You could do that. Um, you can also, um, like I have, because you can upgrade the firmware, 
it's useful if you have an older phone which you only want to use for like a music player or something. Um, you can like, because you couldn't run a particular app, you just update it with a custom ROM and then you're, you're good to go with whatever you want to use it for. Yeah. Any more questions? This, this uh, uh, custom ROM idea is in line with the new right to repair. Yes, it's, it's very in line with the right to repair. Um, it's very in line with the right to repair. Um, Linux OS and other, and other developers. I think, yeah, the whole right to repair and knowing how your device works and stuff is very in line with how custom ROM developers want to do things. Um, I didn't include it, but there's somewhere there's an infographic from the Lineage OS team about how they've included, like, um, how their devices are more secure. Um, X out of five phones aren't supported. I was going to include it, but then I, then I didn't. But yeah. Um, yeah. If anyone has any more questions, no? Yeah. Thank you for giving the talk. Thanks. Thanks.